So double clicking on that entry will show me what was done. Again, action entry indicates creation. Or action, if in the action column you see a change, that means values for these fields were changed on this date by this user. So like this, each and every change will be tracked and updated in the database. Okay. Now, after using the material, if there are certain users need to be given access to only checking the data, they should not be allowed to make any changes. Then they are given access to NM03, which is display the material master. So all the data here will be in display mode or non-editable mode. So this transaction is usually given to those users who are not authorized to make any changes, but they are authorized to check the data. Enter and exit. Okay. Certain times, once the material has been in use for a long time, there may be new variations of that material or new versions or a new model. And the client company wants to change over to that new model. And once they change over and if it is successful, the existing version or the existing model needs to be deleted from the system. Now for the end users, they are given only the option to flag the material for deletion they cannot delete any material directly. The reason is, there is a lot of data already maintained for a material in the database. So in case a material is deleted directly, without checking whether existing data or pending activities are completed and the material is deleted, then those pending activities cannot be completed because that number does not exist anymore in the database. So for that reason, the option given is only for flag the material for deletion. Save it. The effect of this particular transaction is that once the flag, the deletion flag is set, is activated, no new activities or new documents can be created for that material anywhere. So all the locations where this material exists, all the plans, store location, valuation types, sets, organizations, warehouses, everywhere new document creation will be not allowed but all the pending activities all the documents which have already been created and pending for completion which can still be carried out so any deliveries which are supposed to be received from the vendor any deliveries which are supposed to be delivered to the customers any payments can still be carried out only thing is new documents cannot be created so once all the pending activities are completed and the client still wants to complete it or uh, completely delete it from the system, then the request will be sent to the support team. The consultant who gets that request needs to ensure that they have no pending activities or open orders, anything like that still pending for the material anywhere. And once they ensure that everything is really closed, the request will be forwarded to the database team where they're going to delete it completely from the database. Now, once the material is completely deleted from the database, the same material with exactly the same data cannot be created or brought back again. So that's the reason why the users have to go through all this process for flagging the material and then ensuring all the activities are completed and then forwarding it to the supporting population. Now, in case the client decides to use the material again, all they need to do is come back to this transaction and uncheck it for removing the flag. So once the flag is removed, that material can now be used as a normal material and all the activities can be carried out for that material as usual. After some time, whenever you want to create the list of materials, see what how many materials are created of what material type, you use the transaction code MM60 to create the list of material. So in this transaction, the material number range or plant codes 
can be entered. One of these two fields is mandatory. Enter the relevant value, click on execute. And all the material within that range or all the material within those plans will be displayed for uh, as a standard report. So the data that you can check in this report, now this is a standard report. If the client requires any additional fields or additional data, we modify it, we add it before it is activated. So in this report, you can see how many plants this material exists in, what is the material description, when was it last changed, what is the material type, the material group, base unit of measure, the purchasing group, evaluation class, evaluation price, and who created this material for the first time, the SAP username, which created that material for the first time. So like this, all the data can be checked for all those material within that range. Now this is a interesting or a useful report to see the material type of any material in any plant. Okay, so whenever you want to check the material type of all the material in your plant, all you need to do is just come to this transaction, enter your plant code, or the range of plants and click on execute. Now we created four material and all those material of ROH type and they exist only in one plant. Now I want to see in how many storage locations of this plant the material exists. So for that I use the transaction code and then SC not only to check in how many storage locations the material exists, but also to extend the material to new storage locations within the plant by simply entering this storage location on this plane. Save it. The material can now be used in all those storage locations. Now, please remember, like I told you earlier, the material has to be specifically created in each of the plants and storage locations where that material has to be used. In case you enter a storage location or a plant in which the material is not yet created, the system will give you an error saying that the material does not exist at that level. So in case I want to use it in the second plant, Again, because it is not yet created in the second plant, it will not allow you to make any transactions. So MMSC is used for extending the material to new storage locations in a plant where it is already created. So like this, all the plants, all the material, the three materials that we are going to use are extended it to all the storage locations. Now to extend the material to a new plant, I'm going to use MM01. Enter the material number here without entering any other data, particularly the copy from, don't enter anything here. Just enter the material number in the material field. Press enter, industry sector and material type will be automatically displayed. Select the same five views for now. Enter the new plant here. What will happen is, since the material is already created, it will directly take me to the purchasing view. So if I try to select the basic data view, it will not allow me to make any changes to the basic data view because the basic data contains information common to all the areas where this material is used and usually the data cannot be changed. So enter the relevant purchasing data, then once you enter the purchasing data for this plant, press enter, it will take you to the plant data storage one. Enter the plant and storage location specific data here. And purchasing data is again specific to each plant, so enter all the purchasing related data. So like this, each material again extended to the second plant. So, the values that I'm entering here, as you may have already understood, are just random values. They have no real value or no real connection to the real time. But this is how you're going to create and maintain the data for any material, even in the real time. Right? 
So once it is done, now use MMSC to extend the material to other storage locations in this second plant also. All I need to do is just enter the new storage locations here and save it. So like this, all the end user activities can be carried out by using the transaction ports or if you want to use the path then you can use SAP menu for the easy access SAP menu logistics materials management material master material create change flag for deletion display display changes or you can use other to extend the story locations Right. In this way, the material that we created can be extended to any material, any plant, or any storage location where it has to be used. So this is the end of some of the major end user activities for the material master. Next, we're going to talk about the configuration of Material Master.